What lies beneath Yellowstone should not exist, yet it does. Beneath the steaming geysers, the tranquil lakes, and the endless forests of Yellowstone National Park, something hidden has been revealed, something that geologists never expected to find. When United States Geological Survey researchers joined forces with Oregon State University and the University of Wisconsin-Madison, they were not searching for mystery. They were mapping. But the map they produced has altered the entire perception of the supervolcano's underworld. The Earth spoke through invisible currents, and what it whispered was unsettling. The scientists used a tool almost esoteric in its operation, magnetotellurics. It listens to the subtle fluctuations of Earth's natural electromagnetic field, a field that flickers with every bolt of lightning and every storm of charged particles hurled at the planet from the sun. Rocks respond differently depending on their state, solidified stone resists, but molten rock yields, conducting electricity through its fiery mass. By watching these changes over time, the team pieced together a picture of Yellowstone's heart as if peering through a cosmic X-ray. The image was supposed to confirm what scientists thought they already knew. Instead, it betrayed a secret. Four magma chambers, new, distinct, and unexpected, appeared in the data. Not two, not the conventional, shallow, and deep configuration found in many caldera systems, but four. Each with its own geometry, each with its own molten heartbeat, and all of them positioned like hidden organs within the crust. They sit between about four kilometres or two and a half miles and eleven kilometres or nearly seven miles below the surface. Why should this exist? According to conventional volcanic models, it should not. A supervolcano of Yellowstone's scale should have cooled reservoirs punctuated by occasional basaltic intrusions, not a layered architecture of rhyolitic magma bodies stacked and interconnected. Yet there they were, revealed by electrical conductivity, undeniable and strange. The very composition of these chambers makes the revelation more alarming. All four are filled with rhyolitic magma, thick and rich in silica, notorious for its explosive nature. Unlike basalt, which flows easily, rhyolite traps gases within its viscous body. That gas becomes pressure, and pressure in such a system becomes catastrophe. To find four distinct rhyolitic reservoirs beneath Yellowstone is to confront the possibility of not just one eruptive engine, but multiple, perhaps interacting, sources of potential disaster. And then came the recognition of something hauntingly familiar. One of the reservoirs holds a volume of magma astonishingly close to what was released during the Mesa Falls eruption 1.3 million years ago. That eruption was not Yellowstone's largest, but it tore the land open, transformed the landscape, and spread ash across continents. To find a chamber today that mirrors its scale is not merely scientific trivia. It is a reminder of how quickly the Earth can return to its most violent rhythms. But there is a deeper layer to this mystery. For decades, geologists concentrated their scrutiny on the central and western reaches of the caldera. Those areas seem to hold the keys to understanding Yellowstone's cycle, and indeed much of the magma there has cooled, crystallized, and become inert. The danger seemed manageable. Now, however, attention has shifted northeast, and what has emerged defies expectation. In that sector, the magnetotelluric images revealed a direct link between shallow rhyolitic reservoirs and deeper basaltic intrusions. This link should not exist either, or at least not so clearly. Basaltic magma, hotter and more fluid, rises from deep mantle sources. In most systems, it intrudes briefly, releases heat and moves on. At Yellowstone, though, it appears to linger, injecting not only molten rock but also energy into the crust. That energy sustains the rhyolitic reservoirs, preventing them from solidifying, keeping them alive. In effect, the basalt acts as a heat engine, recharging the very chambers that would otherwise cool into stone. The four reservoirs, then, are not isolated. They are part of a network, a living architecture, sustained by processes that seem almost conspiratorial in their persistence. Rhyolitic magma above, basaltic fire below, an unnatural partnership that fuels the most dangerous volcanic system in North America. And so the question becomes urgent, how can four rhyolitic chambers exist simultaneously in such a configuration? 
Are they relics of past intrusions, now reawakened by deeper heat? Are they evolving into something larger, merging into a single, more dangerous body? Or are they fragments of an even greater system we have yet to comprehend? Yellowstone has erupted three times in the last 2.1 million years. The colossal Huckleberry Ridge event, the Mesa Falls eruption, and the Lava Creek eruption that created the present caldera. Each time the landscape was remade and the climate of the entire planet was altered. If these newly imaged magma chambers represent the next stage in that cycle, then Earth itself is preparing for something that our scientific frameworks are only beginning to decipher. Already, the magnetotelluric data suggests that these reservoirs are not static. They breathe. Their shapes and conductivities imply flows of melt and volatile gases, irregular patches of partially molten rock, and ongoing interaction with deeper basaltic injections. They are not dormant relics, they are active players in a hidden game of heat and pressure, one whose end is impossible to predict but inevitable in its unfolding. The existence of four new chambers is not merely a detail, it is a revelation that the Yellowstone system is far more intricate and perhaps far more dangerous than ever imagined. The revelation of four new magma chambers beneath Yellowstone is not just a matter of numbers, it is a matter of process. To understand why this architecture should not exist, one must delve into the physical and chemical mechanisms that govern how magma forms, evolves and destabilizes. A caldera system like Yellowstone's is not a passive cavity waiting to fill. It is a living machine of heat, pressure and chemical transformation. The magnetotelluric images have simply pulled back the curtain, exposing a stage where Earth's deepest forces rehearse acts of unimaginable scale. At the centre of this story is rhyolitic magma, and rhyolite is unlike any other melt. Its silica-rich composition makes it sticky, thick, resistant to flow. When magma is viscous, it traps gases, water vapour, carbon dioxide, sulphur dioxide, and others within its structure. Those gases, once confined, accumulate pressure. In basaltic systems, gases tend to escape as magma rises, leading to effusive eruptions where lava pours down slopes. In rhyolitic systems, gases cannot escape easily. Instead, they linger, building until the entire chamber becomes a pressurized vessel. When the threshold is breached, the release is violent. Fragmentation of magma into ash, shock waves of expanding gas, and plumes that reach the stratosphere within minutes. Now consider that Yellowstone does not contain one rhyolitic reservoir, but four. Each is a separate crucible of potential energy, but they are also interconnected. If basaltic injections provide heat, then the stability of one chamber may influence the others. This is what makes the Northeast discovery so disturbing, the clear evidence of basalt feeding heat into shallow rhyolite. Basalt is the wild card. It is hotter, more fluid, and capable of carrying not only heat, but volatiles upward. When basalt intrudes into rhyolite, it can trigger partial melting of the surrounding crust, increase gas content, and destabilize crystalline frameworks that had been solidifying over millennia. Crystallization is another critical part of the puzzle. As rhyolitic magma cools, crystals form, quartz, feldspar, and other minerals that reduce the amount of liquid melt. A reservoir with a small fraction of melt may still register as magma, but lacks the mobility to erupt. However, if new heat arrives from below, Crystals can dissolve, reversing the process and increasing the liquid fraction. This is not hypothetical. The magnetotelluric results suggest that at least one of the newly detected chambers has been recharged in precisely this way, its conductivity patterns reflecting renewed melt fractions consistent with eruptable conditions. This introduces a paradox. Yellowstone's western magma appears to be solidifying and losing its ability to erupt, while the northeastern sector is doing the opposite, sustained by basaltic fire. The duality of cooling on one side and recharging on the other creates an asymmetric system unpredictable and difficult to model. In essence, Yellowstone is not a dying supervolcano, but a shifting one, with new centres of activity emerging where least expected. The geometry of these reservoirs also matters. They are not neat, spherical chambers, but irregular zones shaped by the stress fields of the crust. Stress accumulation in one zone may be transmitted to another, particularly if they are connected by pathways of partially molten rock. Imagine four lungs connected by hidden veins of magma. 
a breath in one chamber might cause pressure shifts in another. Such connectivity could mean that an intrusion of basalt into the deepest zone does not only affect that one reservoir, but reverberates upward through the entire network. Volatile saturation complicates the picture further. As magma evolves chemically, water and gases become concentrated in the remaining melt. When saturation is reached, bubbles begin to form. In basaltic systems, bubbles can rise and escape. In rhyolitic systems, the viscosity prevents their easy migration. Instead, they remain trapped, turning reservoirs into pressurized time bombs. Magnetotelluric imaging cannot see bubbles directly, but the conductivity patterns hint at fluid-rich zones where volatiles may be accumulating. Such zones are geological fuses waiting for ignition. The historical record makes these findings more ominous. Yellowstone has erupted three times in the last 2.1 million years. The Huckleberry Ridge eruption, 2.1 million years ago, expelled more than 2,000 cubic kilometers of material, one of the largest known eruptions on Earth. The Mesa Falls eruption, 1.3 million years ago, expelled volumes that reshaped the region. The Lava Creek eruption, 640,000 years ago, produced the present-day caldera and blanketed much of North America in ash. Each eruption had global effects, altering climate and ecosystems. The fact that one of the new magma chambers contains a volume similar to Mesa Falls is not coincidence, but geological continuity. The cycle that produced those past cataclysms may be regenerating, sustained by processes that were previously invisible. Still, it is not inevitability that haunts Yellowstone, but unpredictability. Volcanologist Larry Mastin of the United States Geological Survey warned that while no eruption appears imminent, things can change in decades, not just millennia. This statement reflects the uncomfortable truth that geological processes, though slow on human scales, can also pivot rapidly. A new basaltic intrusion, an unforeseen pressure increase, a cascade of crystallization changes, any of these could shift the system from quiescent to active within a timescale relevant to civilization. Caldera mechanics amplify the threat. A caldera is not a typical volcanic cone, but a collapsed depression formed after massive eruptions empty large magma reservoirs. The Yellowstone caldera, nearly 70 kilometers or 43 miles across, is a scar of past collapses. Within that scar, stress distribution is complex and structural weaknesses abound. When magma rises beneath a caldera, the overlying crust does not simply fracture. It flexes, deforms, and sometimes fails catastrophically. The presence of multiple reservoirs beneath Yellowstone implies that any future event may not be a localized eruption, but a system-wide collapse, with ash plumes and pyroclastic flows dwarfing anything in recorded history. The environmental consequences of such an event are staggering. Ash plumes injected into the stratosphere would spread globally within weeks. Within a radius of 100 kilometers or 62 miles, devastation would be immediate. Further afield, cities across North America, Chicago, San Francisco, Toronto, would experience ashfall deep enough to cripple infrastructure. Crops would fail as sunlight dimmed, temperatures dropped, and growing seasons shortened. Sulfur dioxide released into the atmosphere would form aerosols, reflecting sunlight and triggering a volcanic winter lasting 15 to 20 years. Entire ecosystems could collapse under the combined weight of cooling, acid rain, and disrupted food chains. And yet the true enigma is not whether Yellowstone will erupt again, it is how. Will the four new chambers act independently, producing smaller but still devastating eruptions? Will they merge into a single, colossal body capable of a VI-8 event? Or will they remain in uneasy equilibrium, sustained by basalt but never fully destabilized? Science cannot yet answer these questions with certainty. And that uncertainty is itself the message. Magnetotellurix has revealed what should not exist. Four rhyolitic chambers sustained by deeper basaltic heat, but it has not revealed when or how they will act. The earth keeps its deepest secrets in silence, offering only fragments to those who dare to listen. For now Yellowstone sleeps, its geysers hiss, its hot springs boil, its ground lifts and subsides in subtle rhythms of breath. Beneath it all, four new reservoirs wait, connected in ways we do not fully understand, 
fueled by processes that seem almost designed to defy human comprehension. The mystery is not just geological, it is existential. Humanity lives in the shadow of forces older than civilization, older than humanity itself, forces that do not ask permission before reshaping the world, and so the story of Yellowstone remains unfinished. Scientists continue to map, to measure, to model, but the magma remains hidden, alive, and unpredictable. The revelation of four chambers is not the end of the investigation, but its beginning. What lies beneath should not exist, but it does, and it may yet decide the fate of continents. The question is no longer whether Yellowstone can erupt again. The question is what form its hidden architecture will choose when it does. If you found this deep dive into Yellowstone's hidden forces eye-opening, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and tap that hype icon so this video can be seen by others who need to know what truly lies beneath our feet.